Are we, are we ready? You gonna give us a cue? Live from the Moog factory, it's Monday afternoon! <laughs> Gang, thanks for joining us for today's live stream. I'm Steve Moss, this is my partner in crime, Nate Marino. And we are going to be talking about the sub fatty today. Nate, this is by far, I think, one of my favorite synthesizers uh, for so, so many reasons. Um, I think when this synth first came into um, its concept, the first thing that just made me fall in love with it was the way it looked. This, the front panel is just gorgeous. So streamlined, that matte finish on the panel, just it looked like no other Moog that we had at, at the time. And I also love that it didn't have a little LCD screen for menu diving of any kind. Um, because the synth is a really uh, tactile instrument. It really gets you making sounds fast. Um, you're looking at a synth that's got upwards of 16 presets that you can still store on there. So it makes it great for keeping a sound that you like and being able to recall it. And that's, you know, whether it's the studio or the stage, that's plenty of presets to take you through a set for the night. And to go back and work on something and change up a sound if you want to, you know, work on another spot for whatever track you're working on. Um, we're looking at two oscillators, this really fat sub oscillator, the introduction of multi-drive. This has been a highly coveted sound. It gives the synth such an aggressive sound. Uh, going over to this part, the first patch over here, you know, you're taking out that multi-drive right there and then adding it in. Really fattens it up, beats it up. Yeah, it's really, really in your face. It's fantastic. Um, and I think what I like about it too is this really pure light modulation section that's really straightforward. And I think because of a lot of these reasons and the way these modules are outlined over here, this is a synthesizer that is really excellent to start learning synthesis on, but is powerful enough to take you through um, all of your professional endeavors as you uh, start growing into synthesis and you want to do more. Or even for the pro who is just looking for a synth that they can start making quick sounds on really fast, it's so tactile. Reminds me of the Model D in a lot of ways that way. Absolutely, you know, not like, per function. Not per function, yeah. And I was also really happy when this uh, synth came out too that it was designed really with the Ableton user in mind. This uh, instrument interfaces with um, your DAWs really, really well. And we were really, really looking at uh, Ableton as a focus at the time for this. So for all of you Ableton users, if you're looking for a heart of your studio for sound design, you got something that's 25 keys, fits really nice on a desk, is portable enough to take it with you live. Saw a, uh, a DJ actually using a sub fatty <laughs> once uh, live with Ableton in there too. And then you're getting that real Moog sound and you're still using your DAW at the same time and not having to break your back carrying around a lot of gear. You just got something that's going to be a powerhouse in your face. I mean, li li listen to some of these sounds. Here are your uh, four banks with your, and your uh, different, different uh, patch points on here too. So let's just go through some of these sounds over here that just out of the box. Sounds there, right? All right, this one with that sample and hold. Oh, this one is a really beautiful one. Brilliant, brilliant. 
and it's just, you know, just grab these knobs. And I love these adorable little chicken head knobs on there. It gives it that real, like, vintage feel to it and vibe. All the different waveforms that you can want in there, too. And quickly assign uh, anything to the mod wheel over here for really uh, ease of use. So um, you're going to take us through some sound design functions on it, um, a variety of different things, right? I think you were yeah, talking absolutely. about uh, making some percussion sounds and... Take us, take us through what you like about this, Nate. Absolutely. So, uh, Sub Fatty, it's great for uh, bass and lead sounds, uh, of course. I mean, you have a keyboard here, so you can play uh, two octaves worth of pitches here. Perfect for bass and uh, leads. But I'm going to kind of go a little deeper uh, with some uh, sound design. Uh, first and foremost, uh, because it's a uh, cold and rainy day here in Asheville, I'm going to start with... Uh, creating a uh, storm sound. So uh, one of the fav my favorite things to do uh, when I am sound designing is actually start from a uh, simple or scratch sound. So I initialize the preset. And that can be done uh, via uh, by pressing the bank and activate panel button until the activate panel button lights up. And then I'm going to follow this uh, quick guide here. And it looks like we press these two bank buttons and this patch button and we got to actually activate that so we actually activate it by pressing the lowest C sharp twice. So right now if I press activate panel we should have a pretty simple sound. No sound. That's all right. Storm is going. There we go. So we'll just go ahead and do that. So simple sound going on here but uh that doesn't really sound like a storm, does it? So let's actually get rid of all the oscillators, make sure there's no oscillators going, open the filter wide open, and let's do some noise here. And then when I press a key, all right, that just sounds like noise. So let's actually make it a little bit more interesting. Let's turn the filter down a little bit, uh, maybe a little resonance here. And what I'm gonna do, okay, it's starting to sound like a storm, it's pretty loud outside. Uh, let's make it even a little bit more interesting by uh, adding some modulation. Let's slow the LFO down a little bit. Go to the uh, sample and hold setting on the uh, modulation bus. Turn off the waveform and uh, pitch amount and a little bit of filter amount. So we're actually not going to hear anything until we uh, turn that mod wheel up. That sounds like it's storming outside. That's how it sounds right above my uh, desk. The rain hitting the, hitting the roof. Oh, absolutely. Storm sounds. So basically yes. what we're experiencing uh, here in Asheville today. Uh, another fun thing to do with uh, a synthesizer is, uh, let's call it the uh, laser sound, or like the uh, laser gun sound, if you will. Let's turn modulation back down. Let's actually keep everything off here uh, in the mixer section. And we're going to go to uh, resonance, and we're going to crank it to 10. And we're going to just be getting a, a pure sine wave here out of the filter. There's nothing going into the mixer section, so we can actually kind of play that. Simple tone, sine wave like our t-shirts. So how do you get it to kind of do a zap? Well, we're going to actually need to uh, tweak the envelopes here. Let's actually do a little attack, mostly decay in the filter envelope section here. And we'll do like a little release here. And let's see what that sounds Well, we're not going to hear a whole lot of this filter envelope section until we actually take the filter EG amount, envelope generator amount, and kind of tweak that a little bit. So we can actually take the uh, KB amount and actually turn it to zero. So every, every uh, key will actually be pressing the same note and take. And then our filter cutoff knob actually becomes the, uh, the pitch. 
And in that same sense, other than just uh, laser sounds, you kind of heard it on the low end there, uh, we can actually take that laser sound and uh, turn it into a kick drum. So let's actually flip this KB amount so we can actually control the pitch of the uh, oscillating uh, filter here and actually uh, in turn uh, pitch our uh, kick drum. All right, so that's still pretty high. Let's actually take that a little. At this point, it might be good to put on some headphones so you can hear for clarity. Now, because this is coming from an oscillated uh, filter here, we can actually use the multi-drive to beef it up even more. And we're going to actually go ahead and save that setting here. We're going to hold the bank button and the patch button and hold that for like two seconds. And then now we actually, uh, oh, there you go. Let's save that one now. All right, so let's actually go back to uh, initialized preset, work on another sound here. And let's make a, uh, what do you say? What goes with a bass? Snare? Let's get that snare, yeah. I'm already let's do ready the snare. to sample that bass you made there. All right, we'll bring it all together at the end here, but let's actually turn all of the oscillators off. Again, including that sub oscillator. Let's open the filter wide open, turn resonance back down. EG amount, let's actually turn the filter envelope all the way back down. And to, for snares, I would actually focus, uh, at least as a starting off point, as a, uh, just with the amplifier decay. Do a little release, but like sustain. When you hit a drum, it does not sustain, right? You gotta keep hitting it to actually right. hear a sound. So uh, let's turn the attack off because it's more of an instant thing. It's not like you're blowing in a horn where you actually get that attack or even a violin, you know, drawing a bow across some strings. Not quite like that. So we'll turn that down, sustain down, and focus mostly on decay. Now we'll turn multi-drive back down and we'll crank noise. And we should be hearing just a pretty quick noisy signal. Not quite a snare. A little snappy. A little too snappy, which can come in handy for other things. Yeah. But uh, let's take that decay, kind of uh, open it up a little bit more. You can even take the uh, filter and kind of uh, cut out some of those high frequencies. It's pretty snare-ish. Yeah, adjust it to taste, sure. Yeah, absolutely. I mean. It's a little too, too filtered. And because we're only using noise, you can hit any key and it'll sound the same. So let's go ahead and save that uh, preset as well here by doing that. And since we have that saved, let's go ahead and take a uh, similar sound into account right here and let's make a, uh, a hi-hat. So, or uh, yeah, hi-hat, let's uh, kind of keep all the same settings here, and then now let's take that. Just take the decay down quite a little bit, and hi-hat. So in that same uh, sound, we can actually take this filter and get rid of some of that noise. And it kind of turns it into a wood block. Nice little wood block sound. So let's go back to a uh, hi-hat. And we'll save that one as well. And just to clarify, Nate, it looks like all you're doing to save these is choosing the bank and the patch and holding them down. And that's going to save it to that spot. Absolutely. That is a, a simple yeah, really, way to kind really of do fast. that. Uh, so you don't got to scroll through any uh, you know, menus, like you mentioned, to, to find the right preset. Uh, now, 
It is definitely a knob per function, and everything that you see is, is what you get here. But there is a, um, a little bit of under the hood settings that you can access uh, with the sub fatty. And that can either be done with the uh, standalone editor, the VST, um, or with this uh, handy dandy uh, cheat sheet guide, which you can find uh, on our website in the uh, sub fatty downloads. Um, you can also find this in the manual, but the, the quick guide here kind of just has all of these settings on one sheet of paper. You can kind of tape it next to your studio for however long that you want it there. Uh, but one thing that we can do to kind of make this a little bit, I don't know, more of a uh, hi-hat sound, in my opinion, is actually change the uh, filter pole. So by default, the filter is uh, 24 dB. And we can change that with uh, a couple of uh, knob presses and a key press here by, uh, again, going into the shift uh, mode, which is bank four, activate panel until activate panel blinks. Then we go to our uh, little quick guide here, and lo and behold, filter pulls. So to change your filter pull, you go to bank two, patch one. Now that's not all you got to do. You got to actually decide what filter pull you want to go. So you go to either one, two, three, or four. So that's six, 12, 18, 24 poles, uh, or dB rather. So let's go ahead and just mark that down to six. So now when we actually uh, get out of there, we should be hearing a little snappier. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll go ahead and save that, because now that's actually a, a hi-hat sound we like. And um, let's go ahead and uh, create some sort of uh, bass or lead sound now that we have our, uh, we have our kick. Nice. Snare. Hi-hat. And then we'll go ahead and uh, again initialize. The setting there, go back, make sure we're hearing one oscillator at this point. Filter wide open, no resonance. Let's keep it pretty simple. So all we're going to be hearing is the sustain, no crazy envelopes. Uh, and right now, let's uh, set it to a, a square wave right here. It's a continuous uh, wave knob, so you don't just actually flip between each waveform. You actually can dial in and sort of blend between waveforms here. So let's go to a square wave, filters wide open. So what we should hear is, OK, it's pretty uh, high pitched. Let's not actually do uh, high pitch. Let's get a bass sound. So we'll go into uh, the 16 foot setting on octave one. We will go down the octave uh, buttons here to a negative one. We should hear a lower sound now. All right, that's what we're hearing. So uh, let's, uh, since we're here, let's do sort of a uh, organ sound, if we will. So we'll kind of uh, trim that uh, filter down, do a little bit of resonance. Nothing too buzzy, but uh, we'll do that. Let's add a second octave here. Let's do it a little quieter, because we don't know where that second uh, oscillator frequency is at, but we kind of want that in tune, also square. To a little lower there. Let's do some multi drive. Not quite organ, so we'll go up an octave and see where that leads us. Organ ish. And, uh, depends on the organ. Yeah, it depends on the organ. There's lots of different organs out there. Uh, so, with that in mind, let's keep that saved. So now we have uh, four saved sounds here. And uh, now we can actually kind of uh, take these saved sounds, run them through uh, you know, a DAW like Ableton, like you mentioned, uh, a sampler, so you can actually uh, create your own uh, drum beat, or even uh, a looper like we have here today. So let's start with a new loop. And uh, let's find out the right our tone for our, our kick. Sounds kick. Pretty pretty good kick, low end. What do you think? Think lower? Let's see here. Again, can adjust to taste. That's why it's uh, 
uh, wonderful to kind of design your own sounds so you can actually make it fit for your exact purpose. And we can even adjust some settings, like let's say we wanted a little bit more of a release or a longer decay. Okay, that's what I was going for. And um, adjust a taste. Yeah, let's go with that one. All right, cool. We'll go with that one then. So we can uh, start a new loop here. Let's go. All right, so we got a, a kick drum kind of going. Let's add that snare, right? And it doesn't matter because it's noise. There's no pitch. So we can hit any note we want. take this uh, third noise that we created and uh, add some hi-hats to this uh, sweet beat. Still sounds a little too snary, so let's kind of take that decay down. Let's turn it down, get it a little bit different in the mix. Now we can take that uh, organ sound that we played and uh, by all means uh, write a wonderful bass riff. Feel the beat. It's not quantized, so it feels a little choppy, but we can actually write uh, on top of that. So we can take that same uh, bass sound, actually uh, throw it up an octave. And then now we uh, have a lead sound. Uh, again, adjust the taste. any of that because we're actually out of steps here and didn't want to burn anything gotcha. down but we can actually stop that and uh, if anybody has any questions uh, now would be a good time to ask them yeah otherwise we'll just keep playing with some uh, stuff. so uh, pitch modulation we can do some pitch modulation let's actually start with a uh, another simple sound here we'll uh, start from scratch and uh, press the C sharp and I'll get that uh, simple sound going we'll do one oscillator Filter wide open. Let's do just let's just do sustain. They just want uh, some pitch modulation. So pitch modulation it is. Let's do something a little lower. You mind uh, buzzing that octave down? All right. So throw some pitch in there. All right. Nothing's yeah, happening. Nothing's happening yet. Because we need to add our mod wheel here. All right. Let's do that. To our LFO rate. Let's get this on a triangle so you can really hear it scoop. can get to the extremities. Oh yeah. You can crank that LFO. We 
But this is a great, you know, it's a great question because this is how you get some of that character and give us some notes, some motion. We did a little bit of that when I was uh, noodling around. Uh, this is where you're going to get your, we're talking sound design, adding some vibrato to a note. You know, I like to try to get mine as uh, immediate range over there using that triangle wave. Keeps it just nice and tasty. Just movement. A little bit of movement. And then we're, you know, it's a monophonic synthesizer, so you have that ability to then give it some direction and push through that LFO. Just like a, a vocalist would do with their own vibrato, too. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great question. Very good question. And another uh, fun thing that you can do with this uh, handy dandy uh, guide here is actually change your uh, LFO range from uh, low, medium to high. So to do that, you actually get back into shift mode, which is bank four and activate panel until activate panel blinks. Look over here, and then it says LFO range. You uh, select these two, bank two and patch three. And then since there's only three options, you actually only have uh, three notes to choose from. So low, medium, or high. Uh, let's, uh, let's try low out. Let's go low. It's so it's an LFO, right and uh, we're going to go even lower. Wow, that's a slow LFO. That slow LFO. Glide for days. Absolutely. This one gets pretty fast too. Oh, that's a really nice control. Well, since we don't have uh, too many questions also right now, also, I mean, let's talk about incorporating this, you know, if you're talking about using this with your DAW and stuff like that. Uh, tell us a little bit about the panel and our MIDI functionality. I mean, are, are some of these things assignable, Nate? Uh, assignable, like, I mean, every single uh, knob here can be controlled via MIDI CC message. So Perfect. you can actually plug that, uh, uh, you know, write your own, you know, modulation or uh, um, uh, basically however you want it in a you know, song via MIDI. And then you don't actually need to burn your uh, you know, mod wheel to actually uh, control the filter here. Right. Or basically any setting here. So you can actually go from um, uh, saving your LFO to whatever you want to use. I mean, you only get three options here, pitch, filter, and wave amount. And s keep it that way so you can actually modulate those three parameters. But then you can also modulate any parameter via MIDI, yeah. uh, basically. That's great. Yeah, it's a great way to automate the synth. And again, taking it out, playing live. You know, you, you want to be able to play with one hand, focusing on what you're doing. And you can have certain things automated, so you don't have to grab on a bunch of knobs. Are we looking at any more questions? Yeah, or, in yeah, in the chat? Yeah. OK. Daft Punk sounds. I don't listen to Daft Punk, so well, what, what's a Daft Punk sound? Well, let's get to that initialized patch again. OK, we'll go there, 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 there. And we got to hit that You're twice. You're so fast. Look at you go. Awesome. Let's get some more sound up here. All right. So. Get that filter wide open. Sub octave. Now get that sub oscillator sub comes oscillator. in there. Really starts like pushing that the basement on that. I'm a big fan of the glide with us. So that's a Daft Punk sound. You can get crunchy. I would like to hear it about a thousand times louder than that, though. Sure. Makes sense. This synthesizer sounds so good live and loud. But because of our microphones, we have to keep the volume down. <laughs> and another tip uh, just for you know, playing this live, I mean, there is a dedicated headphone uh, output here with a, uh, a knob, so you can actually plug your headphones in and listen while live on the stage.
got to get that glide just right. It's hard to play like this. Some more bite there now. Blend it in between a uh, square and a saw. Yeah. Now that's you know another sound design trick. You know you don't. Those. Filter modulation on this side. That's slow LFO still. If you have any more questions, you can uh, reach out to us on our live chat. We are here at the factory from 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time to 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So uh, if you have any more questions, feel free to uh, ask us at any time. If there's uh, anything else, we will see you next time. Oh. Oh, yeah, with that sound? Yeah. Yeah, good call. Good call. I like that. Yeah, so you hard sync, hard sync oscillator one and two, also, yeah. And you can sweep that. Find those sweet spots that you like. That's a nice overtone right there. for days. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, until next time. Well, I think we got one more question coming over here. Oh. Yeah, yeah, Effect absolutely, pedals. yeah. I mean, there's nothing more that I like than actually taking a Moog synthesizer and playing it through effects. Um, especially, you know, like since the grandmother came out with that spring reverb in there too. It's so nice having that effect, but you know, you could run this through your pedal board and come up with so many different sounds. Yeah, excellent question, great question. Yeah, it, oh, is the output too hot to drive guitar pedals? So uh, it can drive guitar pedals for sure. Yeah. All right, that's it. All right. Uh, Steve, just play us out. Thanks for joining us, guys.